Dear friends in Christ Jesus, at the outset, I am delighted, overwhelmed and extremely grateful to God for giving us this grace-filled 200 days of spiritual nourishment. It was all started thinking that the pandemic is going to be there for a few days. The lockdown, the curfew is going to end in a fortnight. And when people requested or uh, were looking for some English mass, that is where I thought, why can't we start a ministry helping out the English-speaking community? And that's how we started this ministry. And of course, initially, we were not also very clear about the whole modality, although I'm qualified in the communication ministry in the sense my uh, media, visual communication. But uh, we were not very sure as to how to start and how to go about. Then we started it in the very same chapel and of course with our small little team, which is still a small team, but we have different members coming in and going. And for the first, five, hun first 100 days we had a uh, another set of technicians and one of the fellows who got job elsewhere outside and he got a good job and uh, now we have other set of technicians all youngsters and children and uh, there are people who are highly committed and for 200 days I, I somehow it is only the number looks very big and then it's almost closer to seven months more than six months I just cannot cannot even believe it so it all started thinking it's going to end by end of April, then May, then I thought by all means June, then July, August, September, October, and it is going on. And I'm really thankful for these wonderful days. It helped me also to go through the word of God, to reflect, to share, and to also get your reflections. It was a very beautiful uh, nourishment, spiritual nourishment, and a journey, and I'm extremely thankful for for my team I, I thank I really mean I pray for each and every one of them that the Lord may bless them because most of them almost all of them are poor and they 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 are from a very very poor they're from poor families so I am sure God will bless them and take them to uh, greater heights and many of you are also willing to come forward to help these children also help the ministry in general and uh, those of you who contacted me to uh, extend your help in various means I, I said okay a little more time little more time I would uh, maybe in this one or two days I will also tell you where exactly you can offer your help so that it is concrete and it goes for a right cause and of course it should go for a right cause because uh, I, I just had a chat with the provincial also who celebrated the 100th day. He also was very happy with the ministry and he's also very happy with the way people, you are all responding. And today's Mass is going to be celebrated by a Vice Provincial for the Don Bosco. His name itself is Don Bosco and we call him both Father Bosco and Father also was um, for the Provincial and for the Vice Provincial. Both of them were um, tested positive from the time they came from came down from Italy after the general chapter and at least for the provincial uh, managed uh, with much lesser infection but our vice provincial literally went through the pain and suffering and agony it was life and death struggle but then the prayers of people and the courage that he had and the trust and the confidence the hope he had in God it made him to come out of it and he's doing very well in his um, ministry and I'm very happy that he accepted to celebrate this um, Holy Eucharist on the 200th day and I think slowly we'll also eventually wrap up the everyday mass because also we have started our uh, college though it's an online thing it is happening like from morning 9 o'clock I need to be there till evening and then evening we start and it goes to till 2, 3 and uh, to be very frank with you honest with you I have not slept the night sleep for past 7 months almost closer to 7 months I have not slept the night I only I'm only stealing time from day and daytime and then sometimes during the college meeting after the meeting I just take a bit of time and come and sleep a bit and then I was trying to do that and some some of the viewers some doctors themselves suggested I think you need a break 
you need to also to safeguard your health and that is the reason. But um, even when, when we stop, if we are not going to stop our mass, we will be continuing with our Sunday mass with much more preparation, with much more a bigger team and uh, because of the seniors mainly my concern is more for the seniors who cannot move out and of course I, I can already disclose about the next project that I'm planning is to give you uh, the reflection every day I don't want to starve you of the word of God that I will do come what may whatever difficulties I will try to uh, do it I'm, I'm planning to do it under the title double-edged sword uh, the word of God and it, it can it can strengthen our life of course spiritual communion we, may, we can also uh, move to the other places because a lot of churches are getting open and some parish priests, some of them also calling me up and saying how long you are going to continue and things like that. So for various reasons, we will slowly eventually wind up and I would like, to, as I said, I will send the questionnaire, the link, you can write it and send it to us. We will keep in touch and I will pray for you every day and of course Sunday Mass, we'll, we, we, will, we will be in touch as long as we are able to be in touch. That's my concern, there is nothing to stop that, it will go on. But I also need to concentrate, lots and lots of work are uh, spending for me, this becomes the first priority. And a lot more um, portfolios right now, I am, I am blessed with six portfolios right now. This is the seventh work that I am doing. And of course this is the most, the noblest work among them. Therefore I, I, I am finding it difficult to space out and things like that. So few demands I will be also, it's not a demand, I will be asking you for few favours, don't worry, I'm not going to ask you money or something, but few favours, some help, uh, one by one in these uh, days and I'm sure you will all help me because already there is a beautiful bonding between you and me and you've already reached our fam your families and continue to pray for our ministry, continue to pray for all the children, the youngsters who worked tirelessly, if I have not slept the nights, these people also now slept the nights. So this is the way we have worked. It's it's miracle. For me, it's just a miracle. It's not my capacity. It's not the capacity of individuals. With the small team, without much of technical facilities, if God can do this, He can do big wonders using you for any purpose. That's why we should not get worried about what I can do, what am I going to achieve, nothing. If He thinks everything is possible, all that we need is to just surrender let us not force our way through i am sure you will you will you will see a lot more blessings and i will also be asking you for a few more um, helps like your feedback and your questionnaire and we'll keep in touch and let's together take this digital church forward while our focus should be face to face communion may god bless you all In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your Dear friends, I am happy to celebrate this Eucharist, where we experience the passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus. And today is a great day, where we remember Father David, past 200 days, God had given him the strength and the courage to celebrate the Eucharist and to invite the faithful to participate in the Eucharist through this YouTube channel. We need to praise and thank God for having given this wonderful opportunity to Father David to take this initiative and bring many more faithful to come closer to God. Let's pray for him and let's pray for his intentions. And I'm happy to celebrate this Holy Eucharist, dear friends, 
because I have experienced the touch of the Lord in my life as I had experienced this Korana where I stayed in the hospital for 40 days. So more and more I feel that the touch of the Lord and the presence of the Holy Spirit help me to be a real witnesses, not only today, always. I'm grateful to God and grateful to the faithful who prayed for me. When we take part in the Eucharist celebration, we need to surrender ourselves before God, especially our own limitations, and ask for pardon and forgiveness. Our Lord is ready to forgive us, provided we are always ready to surrender our sinful nature. Let's ask pardon and forgiveness from Him. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, Increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. The first reading, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians, chapter 1, Verses 1 to 11. Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus, to all the saints in Christ Jesus who are at Philippi, with the bishops and deacons, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God in all my rem remembrance of you. Always in every prayer of mine for you, all making my prayer with a joy. Because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to feel this way about you all because I hold you in my heart. For you all are partakers with me of grace, both in my imprisonment and in the de defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness. How I yearn for you all with the affection of Christ Jesus. And it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and discernment so that you may approve what is excellent and so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes to Jesus Christ, to the glory and praise of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. Let your response be, Great are the works of the Lord. I will praise the Lord with all my heart in the meeting of the just and the assembly. Great are the works of the Lord to be pondered by all who delight in them. Great are the works of the Lord. Your response Majestic and glorious his work, his justice stands firm forever. He has given us a memorial of his wonders. The Lord is gracious and merciful. Great are the works of the Lord. 
your response. He gives food to those who fear him, keeps his covenant ever in mind. His mighty works he has shown to his people by giving them the heritage of nations. Great are the works of the Lord. Your response. Gospel Acclamation Alleluia, Alleluia. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. And I know them and they follow me. Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Chapter 14, verses 1 to 6. One Sabbath, when Jesus went to dine at the house of a ruler of the Pharisees, they were watching him carefully. And behold, there was a man before him who had dropsy. And Jesus responded to the lawyers and Pharisees, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath or not? But they remained silent. Then he took him and healed him and sent him away. And he said to them, Which of you, having a son or an ox that has fallen into a well on a Sabbath day, will not immediately pull him out? And they could not reply to these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear friends, the sermon which I prepared from the first reading, taken from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Each and every word is a powerful word which I connect to my own life. Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus, to all the saints in Christ Jesus who are at Philippi, with the bishops and deacons, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. St. Paul, trying to communicate to the new converts that grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is with you all. And he says that how he recognized himself, saying that he is a servant of Christ Jesus, Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus. And he also approves the status of the new convert saying that, that to all the saints in Christ Jesus who are at Philippi. So this is the personal experience which all of us should have. God created all of us in his own image and likeness. And so we, the evangelizer, should always feel that we are servants of Christ. And when we communicate to our own beneficiaries, we should feel that our beneficiaries are the saints in Jesus Christ. And this is a powerful message today the Word of God is communicating to us. And secondly, every day we long for grace and every day we long for peace. When the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, when it dwells within us, certainly we live our day peacefully and we go to bed peacefully and we get up early in the morning joyfully. And that's the reason today Paul says, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So this should be our spiritual experience. Each and every day we come across so many experiences. But when we experience the grace of Jesus, when we experience the peacefulness which we receive from Jesus, certainly whatever we may do, we always make it to our way of life, which we call as, as a spirituality. And I thank God in all my remembrance of you, unless we go through sufferings, we may not realize the worthness of thanking or gratitude. I personally feel that each and every minute I need to thank God because lying down in the hospital for 40 days and every day for the oxygen which I was inhaling, they were charging 6,500 rupees. And I was reflecting every day, every minute, every second, you are breathing in and breathing out. So who is this oxygen? God is the one who is giving this air for us to breathe in and breathe out. And what does he charge us? Nothing. 
and we need to respond to his unconditional love. And that's the reason so many faithful when they prayed, they prayed with sincerity of their hearts and that's the reason we always say that we need to thank them. Because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. So each and every member who believe in Christ, they are another gospel where we are trying to see the message which they company communicate the way they live their lives. So it is right for me to feel this way about you all because I hold you in my heart. For you are all partakers with me of grace, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. So St. Paul from the beginning till the end, he is trying to con communicate to the converts that the relationship plays the major role. Relationship with God, relationship with myself, relationship with others and this is the centrality of our spiritual life. When things are going right, if you feel that I am happy today, it is not that uh, everything was okay, but basically the relationship was okay. My relationship with God, my relationship with my people and my relationship with myself, I am happy that it's going on well. When this feeling comes, certainly we can say that everything is going in the right direction. And that's the reason psychologists always they say that when the relationship is set right, there is also a term called emotional reserve should be made. Emotional reserve is very important and that makes us to relate with our own neighbors, with our own self every day without any expectations. And that's the reason he says that it's right for me to feel this way about you all because I hold you in my heart. St. Paul is very, very grateful to the new converts, very, very grateful to the new converts because they believed in Jesus and they sustained in the relationship which they have tasted from Jesus. So, for God is my witness and how I earn for you all with the affection of Christ Jesus. And it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment. So this is of the message we need to share with each of us as we are called to live in this pandemic time. It's a very discouraging moment. But then our connectivity to God, our connectivity to ourself and our connectivity to others, certainly that will give us a real strength to feel that we are all created in his own image and likeness. And coming to the gospel, Jesus, so much importance he has given to the person who was sick. It was on Sabbath day and people were ready to question him, the act which he is going to do. But yet, he boldly came forward and healed the person. Whatever may be the circumstances, whatever may be the situations, he always felt the need of the others and that is the lesson we also should learn that whatever may be the situation if a person is in need of something we should be ready to extend our helping hand and the gospel very nicely and clearly said and so many messages can be drawn from the gospel when jesus went to dine at the house of ruler of the pharisees they were watching him carefully see the divine nature was existing in jesus he never calculated anything. But then when he went to dine with the Pharisees, people were watching him care care carefully. And people also say that even this sick man who was staying over there, purposely they brought him in order to test whether Jesus cures this man on Sabbath day. They wanted to find a fault in him. But Jesus, whatever may be the circumstances, he readily helped the other person. And then they took him and healed him and sent him away. And he said to them, which of you having a son or an ox that has fallen into a well on a Sabbath day will not immediately pull him out? What a wonderful question he raises before those people were all perplexed or wonderstruck what Jesus had done. And so dear friends, when we focus our attention towards the growth of the other person, when I lift, lift up the other person, certainly God will lift me up. And this is the feeling we should have during this pandemic period. And so let's pray for this wonderful intention. First one is to see the goodness which Jesus has given to each and every person. And we should appreciate those goodness as St. Paul realized from the new converse. 
at the same time feeling for the other person which Jesus felt for the person who was sick and if we have this attitude certainly we will live a happy life because we are building our relationship around Jesus and that is the theme of today's readings. May God be with you and God bless you. Amen. Bless story, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, the fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ. We humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, the fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice with your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service, may be directed above all to your glory. Through Christ our Lord, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Bring them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love, His resurrection we confess with living faith. And is coming in glory, we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Dear friends, in every Eucharistic celebration, this part is very important as we are going to experience the fullness of Jesus amidst of us in the form of body and blood. As I said in my introduction, in a special way, let's remember Father David and all the members who helped him to reach this stage of celebrating the Eucharist on 200th day. And we also pray for all the faithful who participated in this Eucharist and may God be with them and God bless them. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, you took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church brought throughout the world and bring us to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Archbishop George Anthony Sami, and all the clergy. Remember also, brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and John Bosco, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honors is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let's pray with confidence the words which Jesus himself taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamp of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamp of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Christ loved us and gave himself for us as a fragrant offering to God. 
Let us pray. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs we may one day possess in truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to serve the Lord.